Walking on Sunshine, a conversation about stress and fatigue. Presented by me, Mike Harnett, President, Solaris Fatigue Management. I'm staring daggers at my coffee maker, impatient, swearing at it to hurry up. Today, I need to jumpstart my brain because I'm on edge. The sleep didn't come easy after watching the late night news, something I normally and deliberately avoid. I tossed and turned, worried about COVID and racism and riots and the economy and undoubtedly that second coming of the toilet paper famine. I'm hoping the coffee will make me feel less murdery. I know that's not a word, but it should be. With brew now firmly in hand, I step outside to reflect while pacing around the yard. It wasn't like the healthcare field didn't already have enough stress to deal with prior to 2020. In fact, a recent study of 416 hospital shift workers revealed that 41% tested positive for at least one sleep disorder, and another 22% screened positive for depression or anxiety. When they dug a little further, they determined that those with sleep disorders had an 83% increase in adverse safety outcomes, and those who screened positive for depression or anxiety, well, they increased the chance of something going wrong by 63%. So findings like these suggest that when we're tired and stressed, we have an impact on those around us as well. So should we be surprised if we're struggling to simply get out of bed these days? Not really. Stress typically turns off when the stressors disappear. But what makes our current situation unique is that the stress isn't going away and there's no timeline for when it will. The truth is, we may never experience a return to normal as we knew it pre-2020. And that should keep anyone awake at night. But here's where the proverbial chicken versus egg debate happens. Which comes first? In the past, stress, anxiety, depression, they were all viewed as causes of insomnias and other sleep disorders. But only recently has science revealed that it's actually the opposite. In fact, the less sleep, the higher the risk for mental health issues, such as depression, schizophrenia, low impulse control, addictive behaviors, and yeah, even suicidal thoughts. So in order to maintain a healthy mind, we need a healthy sleep. Most of us now recognize that as adults, we require somewhere between seven to nine hours of good quality sleep every day to repair the brain and body from the stress we face. Unfortunately, almost half of Canadians aren't meeting those minimum requirements, leading to a whole whack of us being chronically sleep deprived and very cranky. Now, for those who work night shifts or erratic or irregular shifts, there's an additional average of two hours less sleep per day. Now, that's a big problem because it's during the latter part of our sleep period that we spend most of our time in REM sleep. This is the critical period for our brain to recharge both our cognitive abilities and emotional tolerances. If we can't fall asleep or if we continue to cut our sleep short or have lots of awakenings throughout the night, we'll simply be lacking the tools to deal with the next challenge that 2020 throws at us. Making matters worse is that if we're exposed to a traumatic event when we're sleep deprived, our chances of developing PTSD substantially increase. Here's why. The engine of our brain, the prefrontal cortex, is responsible for all the rational control of our emotions by communicating and controlling the amygdala. That's our emotional processing center. So if, for example, the amygdala reacts strongly to a violent movie, the prefrontal cortex normally lets the amygdala know that the scene is make-believe, calm down, don't overreact by shooting the television. But when we're tired, whether from lack of sleep or simply from being on our feet all day, the first thing our body does is to shut down the prefrontal cortex in order to conserve energy. In this scenario, the tired brain connects the amygdala to the locus cerulus, the most primitive part of the brain. And this accentuates our stress response by releasing noradrenaline. So we actually have a tendency to overreact or be more susceptible to situations like PTSD. Ultimately, sleep is necessary for resetting our emotional stability. Therein lies a conundrum. A lack of sleep escalates our stress. And the more stress, the more cortisol and adrenaline and all those nasty chemicals are dumped into our system, escalating our sleeplessness and a vicious cycle erupts. And that's why I take my coffee and step outside to break the cycle. So how does stepping outside help? Well, it's simple really, sunlight, yeah? 
That's the key to managing all this toxic plume swirling around us. Well, it's one of the keys, a really big key, probably the biggest key. Here's the science. When we go out into the bright sunlight, it converts certain foods that contain tryptophan into serotonin. Now, how much serotonin is produced is directly related to the amount of tryptophan in our diet and the amount of bright sunlight we're exposed to in the day. The brighter the sunshine and the longer you're exposed to it, the more serotonin produced. Now, serotonin is important because it's known as one of our happiness hormones. It gives us sensations of joy and pleasure and basically make us nice people to be around. We're kinder, we communicate better with less swear words, and we're less likely to overreact when the kids paint the dog. But that's not all it does. When the sun starts to set, the brain reaches into our serotonin stores and converts it to melatonin. Now, melatonin is our natural sleep hormone. It helps us to fall asleep and stay asleep throughout the night. Low serotonin means low melatonin. In wintertime, especially for us pasty-faced Canadians, we have less light exposure, which explains why depression levels are so much higher during that time of year. There are all kinds of light boxes that you can buy to help you get the light fix you need. Just be sure to get one that replicates at least 10,000 lux of light. Unfortunately, working at night can further disrupt serotonin production and subsequently our melatonin levels. Here's where many of our frontline workers are at an elevated risk. And we see increases not only in reduced sleep, but in mood swings, anger levels, impatience with those around us. Using a light box can provide significant benefits to those workers when walking in sunshine isn't an option. So to help us cope with pandemics, protests, and well, people in general, we need to do two things. First, eat a diet rich in tryptophan. Now tryptophan is especially high in proteins such as fish, meat, eggs, dairy, and nuts, even quinoa. And we need sufficient quantities to produce the serotonin we need. Now you can also get it as a nutritional supplement if you're worried you're not getting enough. And I'm looking at you vegans. So remember, tryptophan leads to more serotonin, which leads to more melatonin. Now, while some of you may think that buying synthetic melatonin is the answer or the shortcut here, remember this, it's a complex hormone that if taken in the wrong amount or not timed correctly, it can create significant health consequences. Our melatonin requirements vary wildly from person to person and even day to day. So the most recent research is actually highlighting the many risks associated with taking melatonin and why we should limit its use. The second thing we need to do is simply get outside. Morning sun is preferable as it synchronizes our body rhythms to a daytime schedule. On a cloudless day, depending on the time of year, it can range from 10,000 to 50,000 lux of light. But even on a cloudy day, the lux levels outside are significantly higher than in your house or office, which typically sits somewhere around 300 to 500 lux of light. So pull on those rain boots, throw on a cap, and strut outside for an hour or so. In summary, sunshine helps us develop our body's natural defenses against stress by improving sleep. Since your brain can't repair itself while you're sitting on the couch watching the Real Housewives of Moose Jaw, go outside and catch some rays. You'll sleep better, cope better, and feel less murdery. Have questions, comments, concerns? Reach out to me at the email below or visit my website. Thanks for listening.